Tonight on The National, we are tracking an emergency situation on Hawaii's Big Island. Not only is the Kilauea volcano erupting, just a few hours ago, the island was rocked by a powerful magnitude 6.9 earthquake. It's just the latest in a series of earthquakes this week, hundreds of them. But this one is the biggest yet, the biggest to shake the island since 1975, in fact. And it's a sign the situation overall is still very volatile. So check out this pretty incredible video from a little earlier today. Lava still spewing from cracks in the road. This is almost a full day after the volcano started erupting. As of tonight, there are no reports of anyone being hurt. But more than 1,500 people have been forced to flee their homes, unsure of what they'll find when they return. Since it's right there behind our house, we could hear the, la the lava exploding right, uh, right from a house. And so, you know, there is a house going to still be there when we go back over there? I told my mother this morning to pack a bag just in case a go bag. And I ran in, I grabbed the dogs, threw them in a crate, put them in the car. What in my room, just grabbed up an armload of clothes and here we are. So far, two homes have been badly damaged and officials say it could get worse as more lava outbreaks are possible. They're also warning about a dangerous gas, sulfur dioxide, seeping through cracks in the roads. It's pungent and it's toxic. Now, Johanna Wagstaff is our meteorologist, also a seismologist. And Joe, can you explain what's actually going on underground that's caused all of this to happen in the first place? Because we're not just seeing lava flow, we're seeing lava bubbling up to the surface in strange places. It's true, Andrew, because these new fissures that have opened up have actually opened up much farther to the east than the regular flow of lava. And I say regular because this part of the volcano has been erupting pretty steadily since the 80s. In fact, all of the Hawaiian Islands owe their existence to this upwelling of magma under the ocean floor. But about a week ago, we saw that main crater erupt. Following that, an increase in seismic activity, basically an earthquake swarm happening in this new area, indicating a, move, a movement of that magma. That's when residents noted cracks opening up on their streets. Sulfur dioxide levels started to increase. And finally this morning, actual eruptions, sort of a fountain-like eruptions in those new fissures, which are basically underground tubes connecting back to that main magma chamber underground. But we haven't seen eruptions in this part of the island since the 60s. So since then, a forest has regrown and new developments have been built. Right. And so once the lava is flowing, I mean, how do scientists look at what's happening and predict where it's all ultimately going to go or even how much of it will come out? Well, Andrew, it's a complicated uh, forecast, and, and scientists are monitoring uh, this very closely. Uh, they're learning as much as they can about these new fissures. These earthquakes that are still happening are actually helping us figure out uh, where that magma is going. We're also monitoring uh, deformation of the surface, again, to see where that magma is moving. And we're able to monitor those dangerous sulfur dioxide levels from space. But it's hard to say whether this lava flow will eventually cut off in a matter of weeks or if this becomes a new lava field for the indefinite future, Andrew. Yeah, and that would be a terrifying prospect, I suppose, especially for all those people who have homes in the area. Absolutely, yeah. Johanna Wagstaff, thanks so much. You're welcome.